So for those of you who don't know, Paradox announced roughly a week or two ago that the next E4 DLC will be focused on Northern Europe, and more specifically, the next immersion pack is about the Baltic and Scandinavian countries. They even dropped a hint by showing a random shipwreck with a scuba diver. Obviously, Paradox players know about every shipwreck known to man, and got it instantly that it was the Ship of Vasa, a Swedish warship built between 1626 and 1628. The ship sank after sailing roughly 1,300 metres. I couldn't imagine the raging scenes if your flagship in E4 sank for no apparent reason after leaving the port. Going back on topic, in today's video, we discuss what we know so far about the new E4 DLC, as well as speculating how this DLC could potentially be absolutely amazing. Perhaps Paradox were even inspired by some of my videos as to why I thought both the Baltics, and in particular Scandinavia, needed an update before they stopped making the game. Without further ado though, let's get into the first update. So the first mentioned update this DLC will have is going to focus on the Teutonic Order. Paradox also begin by explaining they've done quite a bit of market research and have learned from the Origins DLC as of what to add to the Northern European nations. Mission trees that are flexible are apparently highly appreciated, and I suppose this is true as Paradox players love to change course midway through if they believe they'll have a more fun outcome. Paradox also mentioned estate privileges specific to a nation and special units could be quite interesting to add into the new DLC. Who doesn't love to spam marines onto Gotland? Going back to what's being updated, the Teutonic mission tree will thankfully be updated to make it more interesting and fun for you. So far, we haven't completely finished the mission tree by a long way, but what we can see are the initial missions the Teutonic Order gets at the start of the E4, which are gain protection from Poland, ally and vassalize the Livonian Order, build to force limit, and finally hand over Prussian Confederation. Sadly, I don't believe any of my suggestions from the video What's Wrong with Eastern Europe in E4 will be added into the game. The Bishopric of Warmere will sadly not be added, which pledged loyalty to the Polish crown just before E4. I can understand this though, perhaps, because of game balance within the Baltics. Paradox have therefore stated the Prussian Confederation, which formed in 1440, will remain a disaster for simplicity. However, they have said they are updating it slightly, giving the burghers a ton of land, as well as getting the hand over confederation event. There's also a new event of the interaction between the Teutonic Knights and the Holy Roman Emperor. The Teutonic Knights can now ask to join the HRE. The outcome of this request though is dependent on the Emperor who can reject it and put heavy regulations on it if they don't like the Teutonic Knights at the time. The Emperor will most likely choose to accept the order in the Empire, but under the heavy restrictions, internal wars within the Empire for the Knights are forbidden. Of course, you can choose to reject this. Paradox have also given you a choice between a Prussian path and a crusading path. The Prussian one is definitely more historical, and I'll talk about this first, where you're essentially trying to become Prussia. You can either conquer Germany or unite the Holy Roman Empire, not through iron and blood, but through letters and words. There's even an opportunity for yourself where you can purchase the electorship for a small sum of 6,000 ducats. The final path within the Prussian one as well is forming the Prussian Kingdom. These missions will set you on a conquest spree against Poland and Lithuania, eventually allowing you to form a Prussian Empire. Given the fact Prussia is one of the fan-loved nations within E4, it's fantastic to see so much more flavour being added to this nation. Going to the Crusader path of the Teutonic Order mission tree, you return to your purpose of being in this land in the first place. And the Teutonic Order losing their purpose is one of the reasons as to why they became far more weak over time. This branch of the tree mainly focuses on you expanding into certain areas that aren't too holy. One column focuses on you taking over Russia and ending the schism within Christianity. The other two paths focus on pushing east into the Horde territories. In my opinion, 
This is perhaps one of the most fascinating routes, and you can unlock the government type, the Holy Horde, where you raise heathen and heretic provinces. Given the fact hordes have one of the most fun government types, I'm actually very happy and impressed at the pure amount of flavour being added into this new DLC for the Teutonic Order. Although there's no new historical flavour at the start of the game, it is nonetheless good to see that the Teutonic Order is getting this sort of update. Moving on to the Livonian Order, a Brotherhood of the Sword, founded in Riga in 1202. The Livonian Order certainly did last longer than the Teutonic Order, but it did eventually fall. Paradox have also decided to update this region significantly, but in a different way to the Teutonic Order. And actually, Paradox have acknowledged the historical flavour I added in my video, What's Wrong with Eastern Europe in EU4. You see, the Livonian Order was not as unified as it is shown in EU4. It had four bishoprics as well as the Archbishopric of Riga within it. They weren't actually subjects of Livonia, but instead allies. Paradox said they don't want to introduce more tags because it will freeze the map, but instead they want to take a more abstract approach to the Livonian Confederation. You can now see the bishoprics within the estates, and you have the option to purchase them over time, or dissolving them, which affects your stability. After gaining all the bishoprics, you gain the Protect Riga mission. Similar to the Teutonic Order, Livonia again has many paths to choose from in the mission tree, but in brief, there is first a colonial path, which is certainly a little strange to a Baltic nation, but regardless, it could be interesting to have. There's also a few fairly standard ones, like getting a Prussian alliance, increasing trade income, and developing your own land. I don't think any of this particularly stands out to me, but regardless, it's good to see that they've added these sorts of things into the next DLC. Finally, Paradox have also decided to update some of these E4 nations in the region with more interesting national ideas. This will also be free, so it's nice to have some more content that makes E4 better without having to pay. The update next week will focus on Riga, so it'll be interesting to see what we've done to this E4 nation. So having heard everything so far, I'm fairly positive about this new E4 expansion, and I definitely think it will add to the region that is both underdeveloped and very popular. Having done a video on why Scandinavia should be updated, I only hope that they give some historical flavour to both the pirates in Gotland as well as the Greenland Vikings. Perhaps it doesn't need to be completely historically accurate, as I don't think Paradox will add any new tags, but within the Danish mission tree, perhaps there could be some sort of colony revival mission of the Green and Vikings before a certain date. Besides both these obscure but nevertheless interesting parts of Scandinavia, Sweden, Norway and Denmark all need a considerable update, and I'm sure all of them will gain an extensive mission tree that will make your campaigns a lot more fun. Maybe we could see perhaps Novgorod also getting an update. There's quite a lot of interesting history between them and Muscovy, but then again, I'm not sure how much more Paradox want to add to the game, as they don't want to completely overload it with new content, which may cause loads of bugs. What do you guys think though? Are you excited for this new immersion pack about the Baltic and Scandinavian countries? Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, goodbye for now. Shout out to our Patreons, Jay Erickson321, Shadowsinger, Jado52, Cargan, Flyerton, Henrique, Redguard76, Xiaomi, and Charlie Demorel. Your support means a lot guys.